So our first talk is on Paradrop. Our first speaker this afternoon is Suman Banerjee of the University of Wisconsin, who won the best app competition of last year's US Ignite Application Summit. Suman has another strong entry this year that he's calling Paradrop. The concept of edge computing allows various services to run as close to end use devices as possible. Paradrop is a virtualized platform for home Wi-Fi gateways that provides isolation protection for sensitive home applications, such as real-time medical sensors. It enables developers to easily deploy their services and home gateways in a secure, isolated, and robust environment, providing home users with an improved experience. Suman. Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody and uh, I'm Shuman Banerjee uh, from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and it's a pleasure for me to be uh, able to come and tell you a little bit about some of the work we have been doing. Um, this is a project which we call Paradrop. Uh, it's, it's actually a system that we've been building um, that takes on a lot of the concepts that uh, US Ignite has been excited about uh, Glenn talked about it pretty eloquently uh, a couple of days uh, yesterday and um, explained the need for more and more virtualization and the ability to uh, provide services, interesting services, right in your home and um, enable us to do uh, better services like the Internet of Things applications inside your home. So we have the name Paradrop. Uh, it kind of gives you a hint of what we are trying to do. We are going to parachute services into your home, kind of bringing the cloud inside your home. So visually, we think of it as moving the cloud from not just being in data centers somewhere, but bringing it right inside your home. Uh, so to talk about that, let's, let's first talk about uh, smart home applications. So if you think of a home today, there are a ton of applications um, that sit there. Um, you, of course, have uh, usual things, usual suspects like uh, televisions that are now all getting Wi-Fi enabled, uh, HVAC controls, uh, you have security and alarm systems, um, you know, door controls, you have all these fancy uh, devices by which if somebody rings a bell, you get a text message saying somebody's at your door, you may want to look at your security camera outside. So that's sort of the world we are slowly moving towards. And uh, then you have energy management, you have all kinds of things that you want to access within the home. So what Paradrop as a system, as a service, enables you to do is to better run and manage these applications and services inside your home using a home wireless Wi-Fi router. Okay, so that's sort of the idea that we are trying to address here. So it seems that uh, starting today, there has been a tradition that um, when we start a session or when we are in the middle of a session, we try to do an exercise where we wake everybody up. So I'm going to try the same thing right now. And I'm going to request all of you to please stand up. <laughs> OK, thank you. So what I'll try to do is you know, we are in the middle um, of a very big event globally. right? And for the first time in US Ignite, what I'm going to try and do is to show you this big global event on the main screen, and people call it the World Cup Soccer, and here you go. This uh, is actually a live feed from ESPN, and we are actually uh, streaming it live using the Paradrop router. The Paradrop router is sitting right there. And my laptop connected to the Paradrop router, and we kind of edit it to show that it's actually running over Paradrop. And uh, the game that's actually going on right now is the game between uh, South Korea and Belgium. Unfortunately, we are in halftime. So 
ESPN is saying we are on commercial break, so you can take a second to relax, and we are actually going to come back and show you the game when it actually happens. But this is actually a live a video stream, uh, streamed on top of Paradrop router, and we'll explain the intricacies of what this is about. Uh, please get back to your seat. Okay, so. So I'll go back to my slides. Okay, so what is the smart, what, are, what, what do we do with smart home applications that are running uh, in the home? The key question that I would like to uh, ask you is, should all of these smart home apps be running purely from the cloud, or should we do something more? And if you think about some examples, let's think of thermostats, right? Should this thermostat be managed from the cloud by some service which is far away, hundreds of milliseconds away? Um, and the challenge that can happen is once in a while your internet may break, you may have a disruption, and you don't want your thermostat control to fail because your service is running from the cloud, right? Similarly, um, you have security cameras in your home, and the security camera may be feeding the video all the way up to the cloud. Um, is that something that I really like? Perhaps not, and I would prefer if this video was actually sitting locally in my house so that it, I don't feel comfortable that this video feed from my home is sitting somewhere in the cloud. And one of the side effects of doing something like uploading the whole video to the cloud is that if everybody does this, it's going to really you know, clog up the core network uh, paths. And while you have gigabit interfaces going into your house, your core networks sometimes can get clogged up if everybody, if a billion people are uploading their security camera feeds into the cloud. So there is some disadvantage of trying to do that. Uh, similarly, think of another application. Think of Netflix, right? We are in the era where we watch movies all the time in our homes, and we do streaming, and Netflix and others are very interested in giving you 4K movies, very high bandwidth movies into your home, and while you may have gigabit into your home, sometimes your upstream link is the problem, and so depending on the network condition, you may be sitting and buffering your video for a while as you're watching it. The experience is not as fun, right? So. What, what is Paradrop? Paradrop is uh, using the you know, paradigm that um, uh, Glenn uh, explained. We want to think locally, or we are, we are a locavore, right, in his uh, parlance. So we are an edge computing solution that leverages techniques like SDN and OpenFlow and virtual computing to provide the service of the cloud service right inside your home. In particular, we are moving the cloud um, right into your home using, um, using the home Wi-Fi router. Okay, so the home Wi-Fi router becomes your local cloud uh, right in your home and you can run services on top of it. The name Paradrop comes from the idea that we are going to parachute these third-party services into your home router, just as you would push them into the cloud when you're trying to run some new service, you drop these services into some cloud server. Same way you will drop, the third-party developers will drop these services right into your home router and they will actually show up on demand. So if I have some new things I connected to into my home, that's when these services will show up in my router and be using uh, the computation and communication capabilities of my router, okay? The advantage of doing this is if you think about it, your home router today is almost the only computing platform inside your home that is always on inside your home, right? Today we don't have desktops anymore. We have laptops, we have tablets, but we walk out with them and we come back with them. So they're not always on in the house, but your home Wi-Fi router is the only device that's always on in your home. And therefore, it also has a very low latency to all the applications and services that are running in your home. So it seems like a perfect platform to provide some computing services. Okay. Um, so how do we implement this system? So we think of Paradrop as a programmable substrate. Okay. Um, on top of this substrate, we create what we call shoots. They are essentially virtual machines. The shoots are isolated from each other. So if I'm a third party developer and I want to provide my code to you, I will put it into my shoot and it will be proprietary to me. Nobody is able to see my code and uh, you know, I do whatever I want. And the services that I provide is isolated from other shoots as well. So if there is another, another service running in the router that potentially can chew up a lot of the bandwidth or, uh, or the computation capability, uh, the framework actually allows you to kind of uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. 
Um, the router is equipped with multiple wireless interfaces like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Zigbee because you want to talk to different types of uh, devices. And then it also has some interesting wireless interference management capabilities. So it can manage interference across different technologies very well. Today, I'm not going to talk about the wireless interference part. I'm going to focus on the first uh, part of this virtualization platform. So the way it works is very simple. We have a cloud manager, and you have all these uh, Paradrop routers in different people's homes. Um, and the cloud manager is uh, managing all these different routers. And uh, let's say some people went and bought these security cameras from a company we call CCAM, right? And they got installed. That's when the security camera cloud service will essentially drop their shoots into the two houses that have this security camera and will enable a service by which the cloud service will actually sit in your home and not in the cloud. So everything's happening locally, computation, storage, you know, access to data all happening locally. Similarly, if you buy you know, these temperature and humidity sensors from a company, we call it N-Sense, um, and they're in three homes, then the corresponding company will drop these shoots on demand, and they will connect and uh, operate with these devices as well. So that's sort of the overall idea. Okay? So that's the concept. Now I want to show you some demos of what kinds of things we can do. Um, it's not all just fun and games and watching World Cup games uh, using a platform. Uh, it has a lot of interesting applications. And, uh, uh, the first application we have been working on is um, enabling what's called transcoding. That is, imagine that you're watching uh, some content. Let's say we are watching content from the NSF channel, which is always uh, showing some interesting research and educational uh, uh, events that are being broadcast on the NSF channel. And, um, but, but the video, either on the path or on my, on my laptop especially, is fluctuating so much that the video is not rendering well. So what we can do is we can create a shoot that will do transcoding locally in my Wi-Fi router to match the bandwidth that I actually have in my wireless link so that my experience of this video is particularly good, okay? So to give you a, a quick example of such a transcoding service running in the home, I'm going to uh, play a video where um, we will compare uh, the performance of transcoding running in the router versus not doing the same in the router and give you a sense. And this, day, this video feed is actually coming from the NSF channel, um, and uh, it's going to show some program. Uh, so on, the, on, the, uh, on that side, uh, my right side, um, you see the one which is getting transcoded. On the left side is the one which is not transcoded. And you can see that the right side one is pretty smooth. Uh, the video doesn't uh, have any gl glitches at all. While the non-transcoded version is very glitchy, there is lots of, uh, you know, right now it's stuck, and the, the video feed is not smooth at all, okay? So that's the advantage of running a transcoding service right in your home, because the system's adapting the feed to the bandwidth that's available right in your home based on the wireless performance. So that's a very quick example of this system. So now we will uh, do a second one, a uh, second transcoding example where uh, we will actually use the other laptop, maybe on one of the screens, uh, if we can get the second laptop on the other screen. And uh, Dale Willis, uh, a student uh, with me at Wisconsin, um, is actually going to play the live NSF channel showing transcoding working through the Paradrop router that he held up a little while back and uh, running on that laptop. So could we actually have uh, that laptop be connected? I don't have the, could somebody get the other laptop? Yeah. You don't have it? Well, it's not on screen, so. While we are waiting, I can just uh, play Guy from the attack in South Korea. There you go. That's the soccer game, not the. And it says by Paradrops, it's actually and coming through a Paradrop service. Amongst the Belgian substitutes. Warming up at the moment. Romox may be preparing some changes very short. We stopped it. Okay. So this is the live feed coming from the NSF channel. Again, uh, just showing as an example, um, any educational content or any other uh, applications like that can be presented. 
this is perhaps some talk going on at, on the NSF channel where somebody's explaining something about, uh, as you can see, uh, democracy and some of the other issues. Is it? Right. I don't have the sound. I should disconnect it. Oh, I don't have any. Oh, do I have that going still? No, I think I stopped it. You can refresh it if you want. I mean, it is playing uh, because uh, this is the, the slides are showing, so it's not like always going to be a video that that particular channel shows, but we showed uh, the video on the soccer game, but uh, the idea is that this video feed is actually getting transported in the router, adapted based on the channel condition between the laptop that Dale's using to the Paradrop router as it's playing, okay? So, uh, Dale, you can stop that, and we'll, um, I'll continue with my presentation here. Um, so the next um, example that we wanted to show was a caching example. And uh, here, uh, the idea is, uh, and I think, Dale, you're going to play the Netflix uh, scenario. So the caching example is, imagine, you know, um, I have a 4K movie or some content that I want to watch, and Dale's going to play this uh, great lectures uh, series uh, from Netflix that you can actually observe. And uh, essentially, um, what, what I can do is I can if, because the bandwidth may not be sufficient to support, uh, the internet bandwidth may not be su sufficient to support my application, I can allow the user to cache a movie ahead of time, or we can pick it from their recommendation queues and cache it ahead of time and then play it. So what Dale's going to do is to run this system with and without Paradrop, and you can essentially see that the bandwidth that's being consumed, and that's basically logging the bandwidth that's consumed, is playing the same movie or playing the same uh, great lectures, and you can see that the amount of bandwidth that's being used when you're not using Paradrop is obviously very high because the other one is actually cached the Netflix movie in the router so that you can watch it. And um, the way we have designed it, it doesn't actually uh, violate uh, the DRM rights of using Netflix. Right? So this is again a live system that we have implemented. The third example uh, is something I'm going to pick uh, from the Internet of Things. So we will actually use a security camera and uh, a temperature and humidity sensor um, and, and what we're going to do is we are going to pretend that these two companies sold us these products, and we're going to use it in our home, run them in these two sh separate chutes, and they will be operating simultaneously on the same Wi-Fi router, and we will just show you the, uh, the services that are actually sitting in the router and doing things. It's pretty simple. So um, I'm going to be connected to the security camera application, and um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to... Uh, Essentially, so this is sort of, let's imagine this is a web page of the security camera company running in the router, and I'm going to go to the video feed, and I'm going to start this feed, and, uh, sorry? Okay, so maybe, let me try again. Uh, maybe it's, the camera may not be active. Oh, okay, that's fine. So uh, let's go to the other one first. Um, we have a temperature and humidity sensor. So if you want to hold up the box, uh, this is actually a temperature humidity sensor device we built uh, in our lab. Um, it has those two leads for temperature humidity. This works on Wi-Fi, so it connects to the router and can be used for measurements. And so what this is doing is, as you can see the blue line, it's showing the current temperature in the room. It's not going to change a lot. But it turns out, for I don't know what reason, Dale seems to always carry a hair dryer. Um, and he's going to use the hair dryer to blow some hot air on the thing so that uh, uh, we can see that this is actually doing something, I hope. There you see the temperature is going up, blowing some hot air. Uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this is going to plot the data in real time. So the thing is that all this data is now sitting in your router and you can imagine doing controls out of it and uh, you can uh, decide, we also have a relay component through which we can decide when to turn on a space heater or not, depending on the temperature of the room that's encountered, okay? So uh, I think we are having some problem with the camera. The camera is, the, the, we have actually integrated a off-the-shelf commercial camera, security camera from D-Link uh, for some reason. Okay, try it one more time. Uh, let me know when it's good.
sorry. Okay, I was just reading. Okay, so anyway, so the point is you would have seen a view from the security camera of the audience. Um, this particular instance, it didn't do its job. But um, you can kind of get a sense of the kind of things we can do with a platform of this nature. Um, so uh, that's most of what I have for the demo. Um, I would, uh, before I conclude, I want to thank a number of people who have helped me with this. Uh, the names are listed over here. Dale Willis, graduate student who works with me. Orko Dasgupta, also a graduate student who works with me. Both are physically here. Uh, have put in a lot of hours on this, and there's a large number of other students who have worked on this project who have listed, uh, including Mike, uh, Siva, Leo, Feng, and Zhong Wan. And uh, we already did that, so I don't need to do that again. And so uh, we have a hands-on tutorial again tomorrow morning. Uh, if I know a lot of people are signed up, we'll actually show you how to write applications for the Paradrop router and use it. And uh, I will perhaps conclude by seeing what the current score, uh, score of the game is. Individually uh, brilliant. Because we can use Take it for... Take so thank you very much. Situation. And uh, turn it over. Maybe it's different. It's not for you being able to create something to win this game. Thank you.